a vintage film enthusiast gets the rare opportunity to meet his favorite sultry actress. Despite her glory days being behind her, her younger fan does everything to get her to fall in love with him. Tobe mans his hot dog truck while watching Amanda buy slushies for the kids she's babysitting. His gaze is interrupted when his neighbor, Kenny, orders a hot dog. While he prepares the order, Kenny asks if he's staring at his girlfriend, but Tobe explains that Amanda is too dorky for him. The kid nods then adds that his dad wants Tobe to give him a ride home, and with that, the two drive up to the neighborhood late that afternoon. While driving, Tobe listens to some music from the 30 Seconds, which Kenny calls lame. The teen defends that the 30s is the golden age of American songwriting but his neighbor just questions why he can't like normal things like everybody else. They soon reach Tobe's home where Kenny asks his grandfather if he can stay. The old man just orders him to fetch him a beer as a response. In Tobe's room later, Kenny asks if all his vintage stuff have any value. The teen dismisses this and asks the kid to go home since he'll be watching a rare movie. Curious, Kenny insists on staying and says he'll go home before the gross stuff starts. With that, they watch a parody of Star Wars where Tobe's favorite actress, Monica Veller, is the lead, prompting the teen to praise the beautiful lady. However, Kenny mutters how lame the film is so Tobe tells him to go home. The next day is the school's graduation ceremony. After the event, his grandfather tries to take a photo of Tobe but he's distracted when he sees Amanda from afar. That night, Tobe attends a party but finds his peers peering at Amanda's house next door through binoculars. One of them hands him a pair of binoculars to watch Amanda enjoying an adult film while using a massager. What catches Tobe's attention instead is a poster of a well-known film director on her wall. The following morning, his grandfather surprises him with car keys as a graduation gift. Tobe smiles, thinking that the man is finally giving him his car, but the old man realizes his mistake and switches his gift to the key for the family's food truck. The man insists on letting the teen learn how to be independent, but Tobe retorts that nobody wants to eat hot dogs these days. With that, he asks to get money as a gift like everyone else gets. Disappointed, the old man comments that his late mother would be devastated to hear how ungrateful he is. That afternoon, Tobe cleans the truck, leading his grandpa to think he's planning on using it. To his surprise, Tobe puts it up for sale. Soon enough, someone calls him about buying the truck. The man saw his ad on the internet, but he's a state away and doesn't have time to go and claim the vehicle. In the evening, Tobe writes a note for Amanda to assure her that her private activities are healthy. He then places it inside a stuffed toy, and as he leaves the truck, he sees the woman dancing through the window. He stops to watch her, only to get caught by Amanda's father. The man threatens to call the police for lurking around his daughter. Scared, Tobe drops his gift and escapes in his truck. Tobe soon returns to his grandfather's house and rushes to his computer to check the jail time for peeping. To his horror, his grandfather calls out about the police dropping by and looking for the driver of the hot dog truck. Seeing the trouble Tobe caused, he orders his grandson to either go back to school, find a job, or get a girlfriend instead of spending days with his movies. Tobe argues that his grandfather is no different since he just drinks and lounges around. Tired of his grandson's attitude, he tells him to shape up because the next time they meet, he might already be gone. Stressed, Tobe browses on the internet instead and happens upon Monica Veller's fan page where he discovers that the actress will be performing in a gentleman's club. Upon checking the address, he discovers that the club isn't far from where the buyer for his truck lives. This gives him an idea. In the morning, Tobe is packed and calls his buyer, announcing that he's going to him. With that, he bids his grandfather goodbye and drives off. After a long drive to Indiana, he arrives at the gentleman's club where Monica will perform. Much to his disappointment, the place is sleazier than he imagined. Still, he asks a waitress when Monica will perform. The woman tells him that she'll be there tonight, but he needs to pay up before he can stay. With no choice, Tobe pays and waits for his favorite actress to arrive. Finally, the announcer introduces Monica Veller and Tobe cheers. Instead of the sultry woman from years ago, Monica is already a middle-aged lady. Tobe is still entranced by her beauty, but two other men heckle at her performance. Not wanting his moment spoiled, he shushes them but one of them mocks him. Annoyed, he downs his drink and yells that Monica is more of a woman than any of them will ever get in their lives. This triggers a fight, so Monica runs backstage in fright while the bouncers break the men apart. Late that night, the club owner scolds Monica for instigating a fight but she argues that it wasn't her fault. Still, he's cancelling the rest of her performance. She protests that they promised her eight weeks of work and stresses that she has a kid to take care of, but the owner just shuts the door on her. Jobless and with no ride home, Monica finds the ambulance where drunk Tobe is being treated so she checks on him. The paramedics assure her that he'll be fine, but isn't fit to drive. The paramedics ask where he lives, and since the man isn't coherent enough to give an address, Monica gets an idea. She claims to know where he lives, but jots down her address to get a free ride home. This forces her to take Tobin as well. When they arrive, Monica helps him sober up as he talks about how he's from another state. His mother died and he's never met his father, so he's alone there. When she asks why he's here, Tobe simply answers that he came to see her. Curious, she asks his age and he lies that he's an adult. Convinced, the woman then thanks him for defending her earlier. The guy assures her that those men didn't know what they were talking about, but Monica admits that they might have been right and she's too old for such jobs. Tobe assures her that she's his dream come true since he's a fan of all her movies. Thinking that he's just flirting with her, she gets up and offers to call him a cab. She asks where his money is to pay for the ride, but when she gets to his wallet, Monica takes some of the bills. When she turns to ask where he can stay, she finds that he's already asleep. 
With no choice, she lets him crash on her couch. The next morning, Toe wakes up just when Monica's ex-husband, Ronnie, arrives with their daughter, Kayla. The man learns about what happened at the club last night, and given that she's supposedly working again, Ronnie insists on going in her home to discuss the terms of her alimony. Monica refuses so the man assumes she's got a client inside. During their argument, Toad peeks out the window and makes funny faces at Kayla to make her smile. When Ronnie refuses to leave, Monica starts hitting him to get him to leave. Because of this, her ex-husband drives off and Monica tearfully apologizes to her daughter as they leave. Monica goes back inside and finds Toad making breakfast for her. She asks him to leave but he bargains that he'll leave after eating. She caves and sits down, only for the weight of her troubles causing her to break down. She asks him to leave again but he shyly asks for her autograph first. They continue the conversation in the backyard as she looks at his collection of her photos. She reminisces about her success, joking that he had far too much time on his hands to collect them. However, looking back on her past saddens Monica, so she asks him to leave again, claiming that she has people coming by. With no choice, Tobe walks back to the club for his truck, only to find it vandalized. He then drives up to his buyer's corn farm, and while on call with him, the man instructs him to approach an entrance. Suddenly, a masked man jumps out, scaring Tobe. His buyer then introduces himself as Claude and invites him into his workshop. Claude then writes a check to pay for the truck, but Tobe insists on getting cash. The buyer says it'll take him two days to get the money from the bank, and this gives the kid a reason to stay in town for a few days. With that, he books a motel room to spend time in. Eventually, he gets bored and visits Monica's house, only to find Ronnie snooping on his ex-wife's mail. The ex-husband tells him that Monica isn't home so Tobe leaves, but not before taking a picture of his snooping. Ronnie then tries to break into the house, but Monica's vigilant neighbor chases him off. Tobe takes photos of these events as well. Some time later, Tobe spots Monica exiting a restaurant. He runs to her as she vents about how her application was rejected because of her reputation. Pissed, the woman insists on drinking, so she purchases a large bottle to drown out her sorrows. The two then sit on a park bench where Monica shares that she's trying to get custody of her daughter. However, Ronnie is using her career or lack thereof to keep Kayla from her. Desperate, she's even considering a movie project from a local company, though if Ronnie finds out, he can use her business against her in court. She then rants about how she tried to make the best of her acting back then, but now it's only focused on the raunch. On their way to her home, they pass by two biker men brazenly asking for her company and calling her Linda. She explains to Tobe that her real name is Linda Romanali. Soon, she gets drunk and collapses, prompting Tobe to bus her home on a shopping cart. He struggles to take her to her room then hurries to tend to the woman's needs. However, she instantly falls asleep. Tobe leaves right after and heads to a video store to buy some movies. Afterward, he purchases some fireworks. The next day, Tobe visits Linda but nobody answers. He decides to write her a note when the woman's neighbor tells him she's at a school. Tobe goes there to see Linda but spots the woman peering through the fence. This is apparently her only time to see her daughter without her husband but he soon arrives to pick Kayla up. Seeing Linda's anguish over this, her fan decides to give her some space. That evening, in the motel, Linda calls Tobe and invites him over, having seen his note where he offered to cheer her up. In her house the next day, the two watch one of her old movies. Monica admits that while it's boring to watch, it was fun to make. After the movie, he takes her to a meadow where he lights fireworks to commemorate the one-week anniversary of their meeting. However, he placed the fireworks way too close, causing Linda to panic. Despite the chaos, however, the woman appreciates the gesture. When night arrives, they set up a campfire where they discuss her ex-husband. Linda says they had a good relationship until he started dictating her life. Despite the awful relationship, she's thankful that she had Kayla. Still, she admits she thought she'd have a better life and made a difference at this point. Tobe assures her that she has made a difference for guys like him who can't get a date. Curious, Linda asks if he has a girlfriend, and the man finally admits that he actually likes Amanda, but he thinks two dorks being together would be bad. His companion thinks he's just scared that romance won't be like what he'd seen in the movies. The two continue getting to know each other that night and Tobe tells Linda about a scary story of a family stuck in the woods. She comments that he thinks negatively for a kid, and Tobe uses this chance to admit that he's younger than he claimed to be. She sighs and tells him that she knew that he was planning to be intimate with her. Tobe tells her they can go home, thinking that he's failed. To his surprise, Linda agrees on giving him the best experience of his life. The next morning, Tobe celebrates his first experience. He soon calls his grandfather, but it goes to voicemail, so he phones Kenny next and tells him to check on the old man. Tobe tells the kid to pass the massage, claiming that he's not coming back home because he's in love with Linda. Outside Linda's home, the woman hangs out with the biker men when Tobe arrives. To her surprise, Kayla is with him. Instead of being happy, however, Linda scolds Toby for picking up her daughter without her ex-husband's permission as it could jeopardize her chances at getting custody. With her daughter away, the woman berates the guy for what he did. However, Tobe thinks he was doing her a favor and even asks her out. To his surprise, Linda shares that she's accepted the sleazy film job because she needs money for lawyers. Tobe argues that she'll never win custody with that job but she sarcastically says the film won't likely show much of her face so maybe nobody will find out. Still, he insists that there must be another way, but Linda scolds that he's acting like every man she's been with who's trying to run her life. 
She adds that he's too young to understand what really goes on in her life. With that, she tells him to leave. Heartbroken, Tobe loses himself in the wilderness and throws Linda's autograph into the water. Meanwhile, Linda tries to make herself prettier for her next performance. Eventually, Tobe returns to Claude, who's curious as to why he hasn't shown up in a while. The teen shares that he has woman problems and asks for advice. He admits that he cares about a middle-aged woman whose life is a mess, but she's making things worse. He wants to help her, but she rejects him. Claude tells him that he should do whatever comes to his mind, so even if he fails, at least he can say that he did what he believed was right. With this in mind, Tobe prepares. Soon, Linda sullenly prepares to start the filming. Suddenly, Tobe arrives and pays the director to be part of the film. Linda refuses to do this with the teen, but Tobe hands her a note, revealing that he called the cops. Seeing this, the woman excuses herself to smoke but runs off. Minutes later, the cops arrive and shut the operation down, citing that Tobe's too naive to be working in this business. Because of this, the teen gets arrested while Tobe is taken to Linda's home since he told them she was his mother. She takes him inside and laments how he ruined two of her jobs already. As she ranted, Tobe produced pictures of Ronnie snooping at her mail and trying to break into her house, hoping it'll help her custody case. She accepts the photos, but Tobe adds the payment from his truck to his gift so she and Kayla can move away with him. Linda sighs and rejects the money since she can't let Tobe devote his life to a family at such an early age. Rejected and heartbroken, Tobe curses and throws a tantrum. The woman calmly approaches him and tells him that he needs to live his own life. She kisses him to let him down gently, saying that of all the things she did, kissing is her favorite. Tobe quietly leaves but is still frustrated about the rejection. Meanwhile, Linda changes her sheets when she finds that the teen still left his collection and cash for her. Soon, Claude helps Tobe make a sign to hitch a ride to find his new life. Several days later, he sleeps in a motel and checks the pictures on his camera showing his crazy adventures over the last few days. Eventually, he returns to his grandfather's house, only to find him with a lady for hire while watching his films. He sits on the porch as the lady leaves and asks his grandfather if he missed him. The old man dismissively says he's the only one he has. This makes Tobe smile just as Kenny arrives, saying that Amanda left him a note. The next day, Tobe cleans himself up in preparation for his first date with Amanda. They catch up and, given their common appreciation for old film directors, they quickly become a couple. The teen even replaces his Monica Veller posters with photos of him and Amanda. While Tobe moves on and finds a life for himself, Linda sends him a letter saying that she won the custody battle and is happily living with her daughter. 